Israeli-based company called Amdocs that generates the computerized records and billing data for nearly every phone call made in America. As Carl Cameron reported, U.S. investigators digging into the 9-11 terrorist attacks fear that suspects may have been tipped off to what they were doing by information leaking out of Amdocs. In tonight's report, we learned that the concern about phone security extends to another company founded in Israel that provides the technology that the U.S. government uses for electronic eavesdropping. Here is Carl Cameron's third report. The company is Comverse Infosys, a subsidiary of an Israeli-run private telecommunications firm with offices throughout the U.S. It provides wiretapping equipment for law enforcement. Here's how wiretapping works in the U.S. Every time you make a call, it passes through the nation's elaborate network of switchers and routers run by the phone companies. Custom computers and software made by companies like Comverse are tied into that network to intercept, record, and store the wiretapped calls and at the same time transmit them to investigators. The manufacturers have continuing access to the computers so they can service them and keep them free of glitches. This process was authorized by the 1994 Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act, or CALEA. Senior government officials have now told Fox News that while CALEA made wiretapping easier, it has led to a system that is seriously vulnerable to compromise and may have undermined the whole wiretapping system. Indeed, Fox News has learned that Attorney General John Ashcroft and FBI Director Robert Mueller were both warned October 18th in a hand-delivered letter from 15 local, state, and federal law enforcement officials who complained that, quote, law enforcement's current electronic surveillance capabilities are less effective today than they were at the time Kalia was enacted. Converse insists the equipment it installs is secure, but the complaint about this system is that the wiretap computer programs made by Converse have, in effect, a back door through which wiretaps themselves can be intercepted by unauthorized parties. Adding to the suspicions is the fact that in Israel, Converse works closely with the Israeli government and under special programs gets reimbursed for up to 50% of its research and development costs by the Israeli Ministry of Industry and Trade. But investigators within the DEA, INS, and FBI have all told Fox News that to pursue or even suggest Israeli spying through Converse is considered career suicide. And sources say that while various FBI inquiries into Converse have been conducted over the years, they've been halted before the actual equipment has ever been thoroughly tested for leaks. A 1999 FCC document indicates several government agencies expressed deep concerns that too many unauthorized, non-law enforcement personnel can access the wiretap system. And the FBI's own nondescript office in Chantilly, Virginia, that actually oversees the Kalia wiretapping program, is among the most agitated about the threat. But there is a bitter turf war internally at FBI. It is the FBI's office in Quantico, Virginia, that has jurisdiction over awarding contracts and buying intercept equipment. And for years, they've thrown much of the business to Converse. A handful of former U.S. law enforcement officials involved in awarding Converse government contracts over the years now work for the company. Numerous sources say some of those individuals were asked to leave government service under what knowledgeable sources call troublesome circumstances that remain under administrative review within the Justice Department. And what troubles investigators most, particularly in New York, in the counterterrorism investigation of the World, Ter World Trade Center attack, is that on a number of cases, suspects that they had sought to wiretap and surveil immediately changed their telecommunications processes. They started acting much differently as soon as those supposedly secret wiretaps went into place. Brett? Carl, is there any reason to suspect in this instance that the Israeli government is involved? No, there's not, but there are growing instincts and an awful lot of law enforcement officials in a variety of agencies who suspect that and have begun compiling evidence and a highly classified investigation into precisely that possibility. Brett? All right, Carl. Thanks very much.